I went in. I am talking about giving you a hundred million dollars. That's not gonna do it. One fifty. Love to help you, but I can't. One seventy-five. I wish I could. I'm mean, just thinking of it. No. Two seventy-five. Three hundred million dollars. How far do we gotta go? If you go above four, we might have something. I can do that. The HBO film Wizard of Lies tells the story of the largest financial fraud in American history, where the deceptions of a single man wiped out the savings of thousands of Americans. You were never suspicious of your father? If you're asking me how I didn't know, you're the FBI. How did you not know? Sir! I don't understand you, no shame! Mr. Madoff, please stand. In reaction to the film, Rebalance IRA recently gathered an expert panel to discuss how to protect your retirement investments, not just from fraud, but from conflicted financial advice and high fees, the kind of everyday financial abuse that costs investors an estimated $17 billion each year. Rebalance IRA Managing Director Scott Puritz moderated the event and was joined by Congressman Jamie Raskin, Democrat of Maryland, Phyllis Borzi, former Assistant Secretary for Employee Benefits Security of the U.S. Department of Labor, and Elizabeth Kelly, former Special Assistant to the President at the White House National Economic Council. First, I'd uh, like to turn the floor over to uh, Elizabeth Kelly. Uh, Elizabeth um, is currently the Chief of Staff for United Income, is that right, which is uh, part of a uh, a startup, a high-powered startup that's part of this wave of innovation that's trying to finally transform the financial services industry into something that's more pro-consumer, greater transparency, of course, lower fees, dramatically better investment products. Um, she came from a, a stint at the White House where she was a special assistant to POTUS himself and uh, with a very broad portfolio that uh, included uh, all of the um, uh, economic security, retirement, and played a key role in passage of the uh, fiduciary rule. And um, uh, in addition, uh, she, even by the standards of Washington, D.C., has an amazing academic credentials. I don't embarrass you, but she's a Duke undergraduate um, uh, and polished off uh, with Yale Law School. And if that wasn't enough, she got a master's at, at Oxford. So. That. Let me turn the floor over to Elizabeth. Well, thank you, Scott, for the very kind introduction, and to you, Julia, and the entire Rebalance IRA and Hera Hub teams. Uh, I'm excited to be here. I always enjoy talking about saving for retirement and financial education, especially when there's a movie viewing involved. Um, I confess this is actually my second time seeing those clips. I actually watched it the instant it posted on a Saturday night. Uh, which probably gives you a window into my level of nerdiness. Uh, but anyway, I encourage a full viewing. Um, Wizard of Lies presents a stark scenario uh, where an investment manager was blatantly lying and ripping off his clients in violation of many federal laws enough to accrue him a 150-year uh, prison sentence. But as Scott said, the sad reality is that many investment advisors are currently ripping off their clients in a way that's perfectly legal. Uh, charging higher fees than necessary and steering them towards products that may not be in their best interest. There's two basic types of financial advisors. There's broker-dealers who are held to a suitability standard, and there's registered investment advisors, or RAAs, who are held to a best interest or fiduciary standard. What's the difference between those two standards? Uh, the way I like to put it is that if I'm held to a suitability standard, I can I can't put grandma in tech stocks or something that's clearly inappropriate given her level of risk tolerance. However, I can put her in a mutual fund that charges her higher fees than another available option, but provides me as the advisor a higher commission. The best interest standard would require me to put her in the comparable lower fee investment that would be better for her returns. Um, so. Basically, advisors that are not fiduciaries, like broker-dealers, may be paid more if they recommend one product over another to their customers, the basic conflict of interest that you'll hear a lot about tonight. On average, conflict of interest results in annual losses of 1% to affected investors. This doesn't sound like a lot, but it can add up. 
So one percentage point lower return could reduce your savings by more than a quarter over 35 years, typical investment horizon. In other words, instead of a $10,000 retirement investment growing to more than $38,000 over this period, you'd end up with just $27,500. Collectively, this adds up to $17 billion of losses by retirement savers every year, as Scott said. Uh, the good news is that on Friday, June 9th, the fiduciary or conflict of interest rule requiring advisors to provide advice to their clients in their best interest will go into effect. Uh, for the last three years, I was fortunate to work closely with Phyllis Borzi and her terrific team at the Department of Labor as they worked round the clock to put into effect these protections for retirement savers. Uh, despite substantial opposition from the financial services industry and many politicians. I'll let Phyllis do the honors of telling you more about the rule and the process and politics behind it. Um, but before I turn it over to her, I want to leave you with a few questions I'd encourage you to ask your financial advisor or even your 401k plan administrator. Uh, the first one is, are you a fiduciary? Are you committed to recommending investment that are in my best interest for both my tax preferred and taxable accounts? Tax preferred ones are things like Roth IRA, IRA, your 401k, whereas your brokerage would be a taxable account. The fiduciary rule only applies to those tax preferred retirement savings accounts. So you want, you're gonna wanna make sure even after Friday that you're getting best interest advice on both. The second is what are the total fees I'm paying? First off, what fees am I paying on my underlying investments? What's the expense ratio on the fund? The average is about 0.64%, but Vanguard, BlackRock, others have offerings that can be as low as five basis points or eight basis points. Uh, that's 0 0.05 to 0.08%. The thrift savings plan that many of you may be in if your federal government employees or happen at some point in time, most of their offerings are from 0.02% to 0.04% is their highest offering. There's mm. no reason to be paying you know, 0.64 and definitely no reason to be paying the upwards of 1% fee that many actively managed funds charge. And I'd encourage you not to look just at the expense ratio, but also at the other fees you might be being charged. Things like 12B1 fees that are charged by the fund to cover marketing or distribution costs. Load fees that you might incur if you're selling funds. Redemption fees if you sell the fund too soon. Just make sure you're digging into all of this and that your financial advisor is giving you a full picture. Um, you may also be being paid fees around management fees, advisory fees, even a registered investment advisor may charge one, one and a half percent a year, which starts to add up very quickly. So I encourage you to dig into that. The last question I'd encourage you to ask is what changes you should expect to see in light of Friday's rule and it going into effect. Um, a number of large corporations have announced substantial changes to their practices, the majority of which we think are for the good, uh, but you're going to want to understand what that is. I know this can be a tough conversation. Oftentimes, financial advisors are people who you've had relationships with for many years. Uh, one of my favorite stories is there was an academic who did a lot of work on the fiduciary rule and encouraged his mother to switch financial advisors uh, because he discovered that she was in completely inappropriate funds, she was paying too much, and he goes to his mother and says this, and she says, I can't switch financial advisors, I'd have to switch temples. Um, all that to say, I understand it's a tough conversation, but it's obviously very important for your financial future. Um, so I encourage you all to take on that responsibility. That was great.